Thanks for watching TechWiki. Click the subscribe button, then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos. It's been a while, but TechWiki is striking back with episode five of Avoiding Common PC Building Traps, which will hopefully save you from disaster even more effectively than a dead Tauntaun or that now infamous video with the Livestrong anti-static wrist strap. Speaking of which, let's tackle one thing those folks were roundly criticized for, using too much thermal paste. Now, although there's a fairly widespread belief that using too much thermal goop will have a catastrophic effect on cooling performance, the truth is that unless you go really overboard, it actually won't be too different from what you'd see with a proper amount of thermal paste. That is, as long as you install the cooler on top correctly. With suitable mounting pressure, your heatsink should simply force any excess goo to flow out the sides. But we're not saying that's not a problem. Any extra thermal paste that gets onto the motherboard or stuck in the CPU socket can wind up shorting it out. Some thermal compounds are both non-conductive and non-capacitive, so they shouldn't damage anything. But many others contain metal to assist in heat transfer and are electrically conductive or capacitive. And besides, even if you use a non-conductive thermal paste, let's say containing a material such as ceramic, leaving your build looking like you burst a tube of toothpaste on it is just really bad form and thermal paste tends to be quite difficult to clean up. So remember, in most situations, a grain of rice to pea-sized amount is all you need. And if you're ever unsure, many manufacturers actually provide guidance for this as well. Speaking of avoiding electrical shorts, it's a good practice to build, upgrade, or repair your PC on an anti-static surface, especially if you're doing your building in a dry environment. This doesn't have to be anything fancy though, and a wooden tabletop or even a cardboard box like the one that your motherboard came in should do you fine. If you're still concerned though, you can improve your static management in a number of ways. For your tabletop, you can get anti-static mats that clip to a metal ground, such as the grill on your plugged in but powered off power supply. And for your person, you can get anti-static wrist straps. Just slip it on and clip the end of it to your plugged in but powered off, of course, power supply. This, along with common sense things like not working on a carpet and touching metal now and then to discharge any static buildup is enough for most people. If you're in a professional environment though and you wanna take it to the next level, you may also want to consider anti-static flooring that is grounded to a nearby electrical outlet. Tip number three, Never actually used to be a problem, but these days, it's not uncommon to get a nasty shock after spending a ton of money on a CPU and motherboard, only to find out your brand new system won't boot. You see, sometimes a newer generation of processor will actually use the same motherboard socket as the previous generation, but may require a UEFI BIOS or firmware update in order to communicate properly. So be sure to check specifically what CPU generations any motherboard you're interested in buying supports and which firmware version is required. If you do end up needing to flash the BIOS to get your new processor working, some boards may actually require you to have the older gen processor on hand in order to perform the update. So if you run into this, make sure you ask a friend or the techs at the store to get you jump started, so to speak. Some manufacturers have worked around this, however, by including a feature on their motherboards that allows you to update the BIOS with a USB drive and no CPU installed. Pretty clutch. While we're on the subject of CPUs, for the love of all that is holy, don't push down on them when you're installing them. Processors from both AMD and Intel are designed to gently drop into the socket with only gravity to aid them. There is no force necessary on the user's part, as the retention arm beside the socket will hold the CPU in for you. On LGA sockets where the pins are on the motherboard, pushing down on the CPU can bend them and they are very difficult to repair. And as for more traditional PGA sockets where the pins are on the CPU, well, actually, if it's aligned correctly, pushing down won't hurt it. The issue is that if it's not aligned correctly, then you can absolutely mangle your CPU's pins, rendering it inoperable. Finally, here's something important about a different connector, the M.2 slot.
Although many people associate M.2 with super fast NVMe SSDs that use your computer's PCI Express interface, much faster than SATA, M.2 is really just a type of physical connector. And M.2 drives that use the SATA interface also exist. So if you really want that extra storage speed, you need to pay close attention to both the compatibility of your system and to the drive that you're shopping for because you don't want to pull the trigger on what you think is a super good deal only to find out that it's not any faster than your old SATA SSD from five years ago. So do you guys have any tips that you haven't seen us mention yet? If you do, share them with the community down in the comments section and stay tuned for episode six of Avoiding Common PC Building Traps. Now with more Ewoks. Or not, we could just leave out the Ewoks. More Ewoks. All the Ewoks. All of them. Are you worried about a data breach exposing your financial information to seedy cyber criminals? Then check out privacy.com slash techquickie for a free, easy to use service that hides your credit card number. Privacy.com creates a virtual card number that's locked to whichever online store you're shopping at. So even if that store gets hacked, attackers can't use your card elsewhere. And if they try, you'll get a push notification so you'll never be in the dark. Cards are so simple to set up. Just link your virtual cards to your checking account or debit card and add a limit. That's all there is to it. Privacy.com also has a browser extension that autofills information for you when you're shopping online. And what's more, Privacy.com is PCI DSS compliant, uses military grade encryption, and offers two factor authentication. And since they make their money from merchants, it's completely free for you. Right now, they'll even give you five bucks just for signing up. So check it out today at privacy.com forward slash techquickie. So thanks for watching guys, like, dislike, check out our other videos, leave a comment with video suggestions, and don't forget to subscribe and follow. It's okay to be a follower, you know, as long as it's tech quickie. So come on with me. Da, 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 da.